Now you know how to structure your PHP code and you know how to autoload it. This is a huge amount of the work. You can create all sorts of code using various different design patterns, but loading one class is the same as loading multiple. You just have to use an autoloader and namespaces to structure your code. Over the last few years, it's become more and more common for people to use established standards and recommendations to increase interoperability and consistency between various projects. As this course is all about best practices, it seems only reasonable to use these for components. PSI1 is a standard recommendation which provides you with a list of good ideas to implement. If you only implement a few of them, then you are not technically compliant with PSI1, but the more of these rules you follow, the better. In fact, there's barely any reason to ignore a rule in PSI1. Here are some of the rules. PHP code must use the long tags or the short echo tags. It must not use other tag variations. Historically speaking, there are a few different tags you can use in PHP. There are long tags, short tags, short echo tags, and some other ones like ASP style tags. PSL1 suggests that you only use long tags and short echo tags. We discussed character encoding and UTF-8 in an earlier lesson, and PHP should also have its own files written in UTF-8. This allows Unicode characters to be used in actual PHP code, and not just when worrying about output. Many editors like Sublime and PHP Storm will use this setting by default, but it's worth checking your settings or preferences. If we go to the php-fig.org website and scroll down a little bit, we can see PSL1. This will take us to a page containing all of the rules, some of which I've already discussed. One rule I'd really like to highlight can be found about halfway down the page under 2.3 side effects. The rule starts here. A file should declare new symbols, classes, functions, constants, etc. and cause no other side effects, or it should execute logic with side effects but should not do both. Now this sounds like a bit of a complicated statement, but it's a really, really good rule. It basically means that when you build your components, packages, classes, or whatever, you should do one of two things. Either define functions, classes, constants, etc., or do things like setup, changing config values, including other files and outputting content like HTML.json. You can only do one type of action in the same file, never both. Let's have a look at some examples of this. On the PSL1 document itself, you can see a few examples here. So the first example, here we're changing the error reporting value to eall. Now that might be fine if you're in a bootstrap file, but if this is in some other class, it could be terrible. Imagine you include a file to use a function or a class that's declared there, but at some point in that class, maybe before it, or maybe inside a function or a method, the author decided to turn off notices. Some developers do this when their code is written quite poorly, and it has a lot of notices. And it's generally quicker to turn them off than actually fix them. If you expect notices to be turned on, and then they're suddenly turned off without you noticing, you can end up having a really bad time. The same can be said for any global setting. Don't change the default time zone, or the display error settings, or memory limit, or anything inside the same file as a class or function you're expecting people to use. Including another file from another file can lead to some complex issues. If I include file A, then file A includes file B, but I've already included file B myself, then we'll get a fatal error because it's trying to redeclare the same class. If I avoid that by not including file B myself, and somebody changes file A to not include file B, then we get another fatal error because that class hasn't been included. Generally, try and keep file loading to a minimum, especially in files where you're defining functions and classes. This next example highlights a side effect which is generating output. So, outputting any output in a file when you only expect to include a class is a recipe for disaster. Accidentally outputting HTML can break redirects that might happen later on in the page, or cause broken sessions, or all sorts of other really weird things. So finally, the last rule here is an example of a declaration. As PSL1 suggests, you should either declare or run side effects, but never both. So a declaration, as mentioned, could be a function or a class. It could also be a variable or a constant, or basically anything you're defining. Another rule of PSR1 is that namespaces and classes must follow PSR0 or PSR4. That should be fairly easy, as we know how PSR4 works already. They're both autoloading standards and do essentially the same thing. Neither of them care too much what you actually name your namespaces, classes and methods. PSR1 does. Namespaces and classes need to use studly caps, which means you use a capital letter for each new word and everything else is a lowercase letter. Methods need to use a camel case, which is just like studly caps, but the first character in the whole method should be lowercase as well. 